The labor director chimes in on mandatory vaccination policies. Senators debate the home ownership resolution and vaccines roll out on Abaco. Good evening, everyone. I'm Leah Cooper with your JCN News for this Thursday, April 15th. Labor director John Pinder says no employer has a right to require an employee to take the COVID-19 vaccination. JCN's news team reached out to him to get clarity on the matter as we obtained a copy of the statement issued to staff of Sushi Rokan located in the Old Fort Bay Town Center entitled Mandatory Vaccination Policy. So the competent authority, the Minister of Health, and the, and the um, um, health official, none of them have said that this is mandatory. The government has not made it mandatory for persons to have to receive the vaccination. It's, it's voluntary. You volunteer to take that. That's not a mandatory non mandatory policy of the government. Okay? So no employer has the right to force his or her employee to take it. While we would like to encourage vehement to take it, but we believe it makes people feel as though um, it's a safer environment to be in. I'm saying these visitors who want to come to a safe environment and socializing with persons who are ready to talk the vaccination, you feel more comfortable. So we like to encourage people to do it. But it's not mandatory. Nobody has the right to force you to take it. We only can encourage you and tell you and maybe in your best interest to take it. The statement cites that all employees are required to get vaccinated no later than June 30th, 2021. Also noting that refusal to be vaccinated will result in immediate termination of employment. It further states that if you are unwilling to be vaccinated on medical grounds, you will be required to support this objection by a medical certificate from a qualified epidemiologist, virologist, or immunologist, or other equivalent medical specialist. Now, JCN News spoke with part owner of the establishment, Michael Scott, who confirmed that the statement is indeed authentic and that the restaurant is implementing a mandatory vaccination policy. While he says the reason is to ensure the safety of employees and the dining public. Mr. Scott further noted that the company is in line with the Health and Safety Work Act. However, according to Director Pinter, that argument is flawed, and here's why. What he's trying to say is, see, the thing is, healthy and safe environment, yes. And that still does not negate the fact that he does not have the authority to change their terms and conditions of their contract. That was not a part of their contract when they hired. He cannot change the terms and conditions just like that. I don't know. It has to be consultation. He has to have consultation with staff members to change that. You cannot have changed my terms and conditions of my employment um, unilaterally. He cannot unilaterally do it. Many does that are called unilateral variations. Mr. Pinder also notes that there's been reports about three other businesses trying to implement mandatory vaccination policies as well. The opportunity for young Bahamian professionals to own land in the Bahamas is a total paradigm shift, according to Attorney General and leader of government business in the upper chamber. As senators began debate this morning on the resolution for the development of a subdivision for young professionals in the western portion of New Providence. Senator Bethel leading off debate this morning says government's responses to creating opportunities for Bahamian changes in the demographic and has always been in their plan. What we are about today is and will be a total paradigm shift in the housing policy of governments going forward. It is a paradigm shift that recognizes the dem demographic changes where more than 50% of the Bahamian population is under the age of 50. It re reflects the fact that the country, the average age, is becoming younger and younger. Let us look at the history of, the, of, 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 of land ownership and the government involvement in creating opportunities. And we would see that successive governments have responded in their times to the democratic, demographic changes and the democratic changes which affected 
the country. Senator Bethel adding that it falls upon every government to be able to see what the changes are and to respond effectively and in a meaningful and practical way. Taking a history trip, the senator reminded that the United Bahamian Party or the UBP starting in the late 50s and early 60s responded to changes developing Ridgeland Park east and west and went on to also develop Monastery Park, Montel Heights, Angliston and Yellow Elder Gardens to provide opportunities for the emerging black middle class. So we see Highbury Park, which became in its day the home for the entire ruling class of the new emerging PLP leadership. The first cabinet, 90% of them lived in Ivy Park. Simeon Bowe, uh, George Smith, uh, uh, Curtis MacMillan, Henry Boswick. The Progressive Little Party came in, and as is, was their, their base in a sense, they cultivated the same idea. They finished off the Yellow Elder subdivision, and it was a little bit of a lag, but around about the late 70s or so, they commenced a series of low-cost housing subdivisions. The Free National Movement, when we took over, continued. Independent Senator Renard Henfield reminding senators that Bahamians alike that this is not the first opportunity for land that the Minnesota administration has offered Bahamians. And let me just remind the public and the opposition that the fact of the matter is this. This is now the fourth time since I've been in the Senate, the fourth time that land has been set aside, service lots have been set aside. This isn't the first. I think we'd all remember going as far back, maybe three years ago, the Fox Hill subdivision, I believe it was Lionel Davis, was the first. The second was on Carmichael Road, office, next door to the post office. The third was the Carmichael Village subdivision hundreds of homes. This is now the fourth. This is the fourth. Mr. Henfield says 250 homes is significant, adding that if the government can help to put one family in a home, it has helped in helping a family accomplish a dream. The 83-acre parcel of land is in the Prospect Ridge area near Bahamar. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis, during his contribution to the debate in the lower chamber on Monday, said the development will be upscale, incorporating walking paths, parks, a community center, a swimming pool, tennis court, and a clubhouse. It will be eco-friendly with minimal change to the existing topography of the land. There will be approximately 250 lots, including four single-family residents, townhomes, and duplexes. The exact number of parcels will be determined following consultations with the Department of Environmental Planning and Protection and Town Planning on density restrictions. Meantime, Progressive Liberal Party Senator Dr. Michael Darville says there's insufficient details allowing the opposition to give proper consideration to what's being proposed. He says this much in his contribution to debate the government's home ownership resolution for that 83-acre development in Killarney, in the Killarney constituency, rather. That said, Dr. Darville adds that he has questions that need clarification. What? What is an environmental impact assessment done on the proposed 83 acre site? And if so, what impact would it have on the ecosystem and water case? Two, what about the relevant geotechnical studies to rule out the possibility of caves, sinkholes, and the integrity of the bedrock for home construction and duplex construction? On a point of order, leader of government business in the Senate, Attorney General Carl Bethel, says this. Under the Family and Subdivision Act, before any subdivision can be approved, an environmental assessment has to be judged with, all right? So, I have no reason to lay anything here. We want to know. It hasn't been done yet. And when it's done, it'll be a public document. Thank you. Dr. Darville says that response it says to him that the government's in the infancy stages of the development. It takes, you know, it takes, it takes this kind of debate to get the facts. There's no environmental impact study done yet. These are wetlands, and there's a strong possibility that we may have caves, we may have bedrock abnormalities, and you're talking about the construction of homes. 
please bring the environmental impact study before you start talking about subdivisions. You got the car before the horse. Dr. Darvel's also questioning who will be responsible for the upkeep of the community center and pool said to be incorporated in the community. He's urging the government to not hold the same standard as other recreational centers and pools in the over the hill community. That said, he insists that a POP government will best ensure that the project is constructed correctly. AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccinations arrived on the island of Abaco and its keys under heavy guard and secured in temperature right conditions. And that's according to longtime Abaconian pastor and CEO of the Bahamas Christian Network, Silbert Mills, who went live via Facebook from Green Turtle Key this morning, one of the keys where the vaccine campaign has begun. Mr. Mills, who was waiting to receive his first jab, suggesting that many on Abaco are not swayed by the negativity and rumors that have been spreading recently about the COVID-19 vaccine, noting that he himself is said to be inoculated. It is here on Abaco and um, people of Green Turtle Key are being afforded the first opportunity to receive this here on the island of Abaco. It's historic. Now many people are concerned about vaccines and uh, the testing that was done and not done. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not intimidated by the vaccine and in fact my son who just helped celebrate his birthday yesterday swears daddy i'm not taking it and i'm not going to force him to take it um uh, my daughter says she's going to take it and so my house is divided with regards to this so i'm not here to influence anybody else's household with regards to taking this vaccine. This is an the pastor who battled the virus himself in the early stages of the pandemic says while he has been told that his body has been built up immune to the virus, taking the vaccine does not hurt. While the launch of the vaccine on Abaco was to begin in Foxtown and end in Green Turtle Key tonight at 9 p.m. The vaccine distribution began almost an hour late. Dr. Deborah Fox with the Ministry of Health who noted that health officials took some 1,500 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine, also sought to allay fears of taking that vaccine. When we looked at the negative press, they hyped up the fact that quite a number of persons would have gotten blood clots. When they did the research, they realized that those persons may have had a condition prior to the vaccine and they would have gotten it. Very few numbers of persons would have gotten a blood clot from the vaccine, or so they believe. But they dispelled that myth, and they said that the vaccine didn't cause the, the, the blood clots. So, and, and we've had quite a number of persons, thousands of persons so far already immunized with this vaccine, and we've had no adverse events not pertaining to Dr. Fox adding that it's recommended after getting the jab that persons take a Panadol if experiencing minor side effects. This morning, vaccinations began at Green Turtle Key, the Foxtown Clinic, and the Cooperstown Clinic. Tomorrow, vaccinations will be carried out at the Marsh Harbor Clinic beginning at 8 a.m. and administered throughout the day until 7.30 p.m. Vaccinations will carry out through the weekend on Guanaki, Manawarki, and at the Hopetown Clinic with varied times beginning at 8 a.m. through 8 p.m. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us.